All right, guys, let's talk about the first three books in the Stay a Spell series. So we have book one, which is Wolf Gone Wild, book two, Don't Hex and Drive, and book three, Witches Get Stitches. Witches Get Stitches is the only one I have a physical copy of at this time. Uh, Wolf Gone Wild, I passed on to a friend because I loved it and I think she'll love it too. And book two, I did as an audiobook. So I never did have a physical copy of that one. Pictures and patterns put into words that stream across the page, capture your life as so spoken. So of these, I gave book one a five star, and then book two and three a four star. Although I did like three a lot more than two. So in book one, we have Evie and Mateo. Evie is a witch and Mateo is a werewolf. Mateo has a curse put on him that he cannot shift into his werewolf and it is driving him really crazy. Evie is a hexbreaker, and so he has come to her begging for help. Werewolves are not well received in their society. They don't like them. And so Evie's sister, who is kind of like in charge of the supernatural creatures, doesn't really want Evie helping this werewolf, but they do eventually decide, you know, he's probably more of a danger to us and to everybody else if we don't help him. So they decide they're going to help him. And he finds that being around Evie really helps keep his wolf in check. So he's getting a lot of, because he can't actually shift into his werewolf, he's got getting a lot of really aggressive urges. He's getting a lot of really smexy urges. And so being around Evie, he finds, calms him. And so kind of the plot of that one is they are trying to get this curse removed from Mateo. I love Evie and Mateo so much. Um, I am a nerd and it is the most nerdy Embrace Your Nerd book of the series so far. And I was so here for that first book. Uh, Evie loves like comic books and, and just all the nerd stuff, all the nerd stuff. And I just, oh, I loved them as a couple. Um, the first book is not super spicy. There is one smexy scene. And in that scene, there is a little bit of aggression from Mateo's wolf, which I did not love. Um, it wasn't a major ick because it was not a huge deal. But it was there. And that was kind of like my biggest complaint about that book is it was like, oh, this isn't crossing my line, but it's coming close to crossing my line. So then in the second book, we have Isadora and Devraj. And Devraj is a Bollywood actor who is also a vampire. And Isadora is Evie's sister. So this whole series follows the, the Savoy sisters. And so um, Isadora doesn't like to drive. And she is really obsessed with plants. Devraj runs into her bicycle. And so they get off to kind of a bad start. He does take her home. And there is some initial attraction. Devraj is in town because there are missing girls. And they think that vampires had something to do with it. Isadora is a healer. So as they kind of start investigating, she gets drawn in as well as um, her sister who is in charge of, of the witches. For book two, I did not ever click with Isadora. I just didn't like her very much. Devraj, I liked him and thought he was complex later on, but I didn't like him very much initially. 
I would say I really enjoyed the plot of looking for these missing girls. I was pretty invested in that. And I would say like throughout most of the book, I was more invested in finding the missing girls and who was taking them and what was happening than I was in the romance between Isadora and Devraj. I will say that book was a lot more spicy than the first book. And I will say, too, I think of the first three books, I really, if I had to choose one where I preferred the spice, that was probably it. It didn't have anything that I had an issue with with the spice. Like, there was no, like, aggression, submission type stuff like you got with the werewolves. Um, it was all very, it was all very fun, fun times. But I just didn't care for the couple very much. Then the most recent book I read has Violet and Nico. Nico is Mateo's cousin. So Violet had met Nico prior to book one, and we get kind of a flashback. And she really liked him. She had been told by her grandmother, I think it was, that she was going to know her like soulmate by his eyes. And she thinks it might be Nico. But then she does a tarot reading and the tarot reading is like, no, terrible things will happen if you get with him. So she is kind of resisting the relationship. He moves to her town to be closer to his cousin and he helps her open a tattoo parlor where he is doing tattoos, but also looking into tattoos that enhance magical creatures. So things that, um, for instance, she gives a tattoo to Devraj to help him not need to drink blood as often. And she is working on the werewolves to try to help them have more control of their wolves. So Nico and Violet are kind of involved in that. And they are very good friends. They're business partners. They're doing all this stuff. He's doing all this nice stuff to her for her because he really loves her. And that's his mate. And he's like trying to convince her he knows. He's, he's like, eventually we're going to have to get together because she's just my mate and this is the way it is. Um, and then some of his old pack find out that she's got the magic tattoos and kind of come after her. And there's kind of a plot about these magical tattoos. Um, I will say, um, oh, and then uh, this one does have a probably, I would say book two and three have equivalent levels of steam. I didn't love the steam in book three because there was a lot of aggression with it. And now Violet is a telepath or telekinetic. So like if she wasn't feeling the aggression, she would just push him off like Clearly, it's a con it's perfectly consensual. She's cool with it. But there was one scene in particular where he's, like, really getting rough with her hair. And she's like, he was probably doing it to punish me, and I deserved it, and I don't... Mm. Any kind of the punishment stuff, I just... That's not what we do. We don't... While we're getting frisky, we don't hurt our person to punish them for any reason ever. Like, that's just not... That's an ick for me. So, and that line scene really bothered me and just the general aggression was not was not what I like in my spicy scenes um I did like the humor though so uh couples my favorite couple was Evie and Mateo my second favorite couple was Violet and Nico and the one I liked the least was Isadora and Devraj for plot, I would probably say book two's plot I was most invested in, then book one, and then this one. This one's plot, I didn't necessarily like how it went. As far as fun and humor, uh, book one was the best, then book three, and then book two. Um, I really just loved all of the like book one was just so fun this book was funny but in a bantery snarky way and book one was fun in a I'm teaching him how to nerd and as somebody who's nerdy I could relate kind of way and book two I just didn't think was particularly fun except for the actual 
investigating what was happening to these girls. Um, I, I do love the series so far. I'm having a really good time with it. I do plan to read the entire series and I will probably, once I do, uh, compare the last three books and maybe even do like a whole series wrap up. I haven't fully decided yet, but since I'm three books in, I did want to come and kind of tell you my thoughts. Um, I do like that in this book, we see a lot of Evie and Mateo. Um, we see a little bit of Isidore and Devraj. I didn't think in book two there was as much seeing the other characters that we liked. Like, we didn't get as much Evie and Mateo, I didn't think, in book two. Um, but we did get a lot of Jules and Reuben, who are a future couple. So I was I was liking that. I'm really invested in Jules and Reuben. And then in this one, we got a lot of, like, Evie and Mateo hanging out because Mateo and Nico are cousins. And also we got a big reveal about, you know, Evie is finally pregnant with Mateo's babies. Triplets, which I thought was a little crazy and off the wall, but we'll see how it goes. So, and and I, I think this is a very fun series. I, I do think, depending on how you feel about the different sisters, your mileage may vary per book because the sisters are all very different. Um, the next book involves a Grimm, which I am super invested in learning about. Um, we've seen in this book particularly what a little bit of what Grimm's powers are, but I'm really excited to really do like a deep dive into the Grimm's. So I'm, I'm excited about the series. I'm having fun in the series. I'm invested in these characters. I look forward to seeing what all is happening, and I hope at least one other book I like as much as I liked book one. Um, yeah, I was really sad because I thought I was going to like this close to book one. I wasn't sure because the tattoos and stuff, that's not really my thing, but at the beginning, Violet and Nico were just so much banter, such a good time, and then just as things progressed, it kind of fell for me, whereas, like, I'll tell you, it was kind of the opposite with Wolf Gone Wild. Wolf Gone Wild, I didn't initially get on with the writing very well, and it took me a little while to get into it, but then, like, by the end, I was loving it, and I just wanted to hug the book and, and read all the books. And, you know, with this book, at the very beginning, it started off strong. I was interested. I was invested. These are fun characters. And then just as we went on, I was a little bit more averse to some of the stuff that was happening. So yes, that is my thoughts so far on books one through three of Witches Gets, uh, I'm sorry, Stay a Spell, I was trying to review the title of this book, of the Stay a Spell series. Have you read it? Did you love it? What was your favorite book in the series? And if I am loving this general vibe. What other paranormal romance books are a similar vibe? I have a hard time finding paranormal romance and this fun, quirky, magical thing is exactly, I think, what I want in my paranormals. So if there's other books that you're like, oh, if you love this, you'll probably love this, leave those in the comments below. All right, guys, it's been Jane. Bye.